Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the other trigonometric functions. So at this point, you have likely seen sine and cosine, and we're just going to expand this to the full six trigonometric functions. So specifically, we have four new trig functions that are similar to sine and cosine. So if you remember, on our circle, we drew our angle, and then we talked about the triangle created by it. So it has a radius of r, side lengths x and y, and that angle theta is the angle we're looking at. Then we define sine and cosine as a ratio of these side lengths. So we said sine of theta was y over r, which is opposite over hypotenuse, and we said cosine of theta is x over r, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, these are only some of the possible ratios for the triangle. So we've just done y over r and x over r, but what about the other possible combinations? So that's where the other trig functions come in. We just wanna have a name for a function to talk about all of the possible ratios, all the possible combinations we could look at. So first, let's talk about tangent and cotangent. So we would say tan of theta, tangent of theta, is y over x, or opposite over adjacent. Tangent is the most common other trig function that you'll see because it looks at the ratio of the x and y sides. So it does y over x. Then cotangent is our first trig function we'll see that's the opposite of one of our others. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And so we have cotangent of theta is x over y or adjacent over opposite. So we just swap the order instead of y over x. For cotangent, we have x over y. So you can imagine that we're going to have similar functions for sine and cosine. So the reason they're named why they are is actually a little complicated and involves some geometry. It's more historical than anything. It's about like how they were defining these functions back when they first decided what they were. So now the words don't necessarily align in a super pattern way, but let me show you anyway. So cosecant, which is CSC of theta, is r over y. So this is the reciprocal of sine. So we do r over y, hypotenuse over opposite. Then secant is the opposite of cosine, or it's the reciprocal of cosine. That's probably a more accurate thing to say. So secant of theta is r over x, or hypotenuse over adjacent. So again, for cosecant and secant, we are just swapping the fraction, we're swapping the numerator and the denominator. And that's it. So these are our full six trigonometric functions. Sine, cosine, and tangent are the three we most typically talk about, but you'll also hear about cosecant, secant, and cotangent as the reciprocals of these functions. I typically like to write them in this way that I have on the screen, where I have sine, cosine, and tangent in one column, and then in the second column next to that, I have cosecant, secant, and cotangent, and we can see that the fractions are all just swapped. We take the reciprocal, which means to switch the numerator and the denominator. This is also a good time to note that most calculators have a sine, cosine, or tangent button on them, but they do not have a cosecant, secant, or cotangent button. If you have a nice calculator, I'm sure it might have one of these buttons, but the idea is if you only have your phone or something, sine, cosine, and tangent are the ones that typically get used, and you can just sort of assume that we'll default back to those trig functions if we're trying to make things simpler or we just wanna keep things in a way where we can type them into our calculators easily. Okay, we will continue the discussion of these trig functions in the following videos, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.